Hi, my name's Mark Paulson. I run a small but very noisy consultancy called The Lang Cat. The benefits of using a DFM for advisors are de-risking your practice so that you're outsourcing investment selection to somebody who does it full time, whose job it is to monitor the funds that are out there and try and make risk controlled decisions to deliver the client outcomes that you've agreed are important with your customers. So the key thing to do is to develop a set of objective criteria against which you'll measure the DFMs that you're considering and then make a really cool, dispassionate decision based on those criteria. What we hear is that advisors particularly like the fact that they can explain to clients that the DFM has the ability to de-risk a portfolio if they see something happening in the market they're not happy with. So the key thing is to make sure that you evidence in your suitability reports why you believe the DFM is suitable for that client. Now that might be the ability to de-risk, it might be the professional matching of risk to the actual investment solution, or it might be the fact that the client has asked for something quite specific and you've put the DFM in to run a segregated mandate for that client. These are all perfectly reasonable reasons to use a DFM. However, there may well be sections of your client base for whom a DFM is not appropriate. Perhaps people who are very, very risk sensitive or who need something just very simple, maybe in an off-platform packaged product. So the same principles that you use to check whether using a platform is suitable for a client, you also want to use for checking that the investment proposition that you've selected is suitable for that client as well. And the key thing in all of that is to make sure that you evidence and document your assumptions and your conclusions really carefully because the FSA will be looking for evidence of your mind at work. When we work with DFMs, we'll perform a yearly check, not just on performance, but also how the communication has gone, because this is a relationship, it's a three-way relationship, and it has to work, so we'll be looking at that. We'll also look at for decisions that the DFM has made that are outside the normal course of business. Perhaps they took a big bet on de-risking a portfolio and coming out to cash at some time in the year. We'll be looking to see how that went and whether they did deliver value. If you like the idea of somebody making active decisions and matching investment strategies to your client's risk, then they could be worth investigating. It would be remiss of me not to point out that platforms such as Nucleus are offering an increasingly wide selection of DFMs. Thank you for listening.